The Denver Broncos have orchestrated a blockbuster trade. Russell Wilson is now the chef in Denver. He's cooking up a storm here in a Broncos uniform here in 2022. How does this change the landscape of the NFL, the AFC, inside the AFC West, and more? Plus, what does this say about General Manager George Payton? You get our instant reaction that we share alongside Broncos country on today's Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back into a brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Locked On NFL Network, your team every day from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, joined alongside by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. Both of us, we cover the Denver Broncos for the Locked On Network and Nine News, and we have some breaking news here today. This is an emergency podcast, and Sarah, Russell Wilson is cooking in Denver here in 2022. Literally moments after you and I had just recorded a podcast reacting to Aaron Rodgers returning to Green Bay, all of a sudden, right before it goes to publish, we get the notification. Adam Schefter sends out, Russell Wilson is now headed to Denver. Sarah, where were I mean, where were you at when this moment happened? Like, where were, I think everybody in Broncos country is going to say, oh I was doing this at the moment I found out yeah. Russell's become a Bronco. Well, Cody, it was a, a missed call from you. And usually, you know, like when, when somebody calls you nowadays, you're like, oh, crap. Like, I wonder what the heck is going on, you know. But I was about to go flip a piece of salmon out on the grill after we recorded, just trying to eat healthy, you know, just trying to go about my day, trying to trying to at least look good, even though I wasn't feeling good about the Aaron Rodgers news. And now here we come. And, man, Russell, a Russell Wilson. You told me Russell Wilson and I about – peed my pants I, I mean it was it was it was just <laughs> awesome like my daughter had just gone down for a nap so I'm like you know I'm like silent screaming and like fist bumping and dancing yes. a jig and my wife is like what's wrong with you geez I mean but man I, I mean what a day for Broncos country this is a day Cody it, it's March 8th the trade went down on March 8th this is a day I mean that could shape the entire trajectory of this franchise now moving forward this changes the landscape of the NFL. It changes the landscape of the AFC, inside the AFC West. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But, you know, what did it take for the Denver Broncos to get Russell Wilson? Now, apparently, these have, this deal has kind of been in place for the last two weeks here, according to reports that initially the Washington Commanders called the Seattle Seahawks. They said no, because out of due diligence, they already were working on the framework here for the Denver Broncos trade. So Denver has traded two first-round picks. They've traded two second-round picks. They've also traded a fifth-round pick and three players. Those three players going from Denver to Seattle, Drew Locke, veteran defensive lineman Shelby Harris, and young promising tight end in Noah Fan. I mean, there's questions that come out of those moves as is, but Denver in return, they're getting Russell Wilson. And, of course, George Payton had to do this. They're getting a fourth-round pick in return, too. Unbelievable haul here for a player and also for a guy that, look, you know, still wants to play 10 more years in the NFL. I think Broncos country is really excited about this move here. Well, it's an unprecedented trade haul for an unprecedented trade, right? I don't think we've seen a player of Russell Wilson's caliber be traded, uh, at least that I can think of off the top of my head, Cody. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but a trade like this just doesn't happen in the NFL. And so – the, the fact that the Broncos have now been part of two trades, I, I would say, that are even even on comparable levels. Remember the Jay Cutler trade, obviously, back in 2009 at the time, a pro, a young Pro Bowl quarterback who was really just kind of starting to show signs of becoming great. You know, the Broncos made the trade that they did uh, for uh, to get rid of him at the time. And now you get Russell Wilson and you're going I mean, you're talking. Look at that. Three players, five draft picks. And those players are probably all going to start for Seattle. And. Man, just got a quick, just got a quick say. Like sometimes life in the NFL, man, that can be super unfair, right? I, I mean, for for like Shelby Harris, he paid his dues bummer, in bummer. Denver, man. So it sucks to see him go, and you would have loved to, have, you know, had him be part of the success. But at the same time, like Seattle wants good players coming back, and then they for sure got two really good players, and then a dart throw at quarterback in Drew Locke. So. It's yeah. it's a tough business, man, but it's an unprecedented trade haul for an unprecedented trade. 
Well, and it creates questions for the Broncos at tight end. We'll dedicate another episode to that in the future here, probably tomorrow or you know, so on and so forth here. But this is the big news here today. How does this change the optics here for the Broncos? And I think all of a sudden, Sarah, it now pinpoints the Broncos as, hey, this is a team to watch because guess what? They didn't have to give up a Jerry Judy. They didn't have to give up a Cortland Sutton, a Tim Patrick, or Patrick Sertan. They have the offense preserved here for Russell Wilson, minus tight end. We'll talk about that, like I said, later on. And they also still have the defense intact. Now question becomes defense event with Shelby Harris. I know that's another talking point that we'll have a little bit later on, but like for Russell Wilson, this was an interesting stat that ESPN had thrown out there. Russell Wilson becomes the first ever quarterback to start for a team that he beat in the Super Bowl. And obviously I think Broncos country wants to forget about Super Bowl 48. I know we certainly do. It was a rough time. But for, for just the instant reaction, Sarah, this is exciting. Look, and like I said, I, I have no like emotional outcome on whether the Broncos win or lose with the games. I always feel like that helps me provide objective coverage here to the fans. But you can't help but be excited about this for Denver because for how long, Sarah, have we been sitting here talking about what are the Broncos going to do to replace Peyton Manning, a quarterback? It's been seven long years. It almost feels like 70 to be exact here. But you know what? Russell Wilson <laughs> is now going to be cooking in Denver. I would say for the most part, the fan reaction I've seen on Twitter, people are ecstatic about this type of move here, and rightfully so. It does help push the needle, in my opinion, Sarah, for the Denver Broncos in the NFL, the AFC, and inside the division. How is that so? That's something that you and I are going to discuss coming up here in just a moment. But Broncos country, on this breaking news episode of Lockdown Broncos, I have to give a special shout-out to our good friends over there at Built Bar. Built Bar is the best-tasting protein bar that is out there on the market today. They have nine amazing original flavors, plus the occasional – Limited time flavor like the churro puffs or the banana cream puffs. Fantastic value. Each bar is covered in 100% milk chocolate. And when you take a bite into them, they are soft and they are easy to chew. And if you need a little bit of extra fuel to help you get through your day, well, if you need to be cooking up a little bit like Russell Wilson and his workouts, I'm sure Russ goes to Built Bar where it gives you 17 grams of protein, 130 calories, and I only have four grams of sugar. So I want you to head to Built.com right now. Find a box, find a flavor that best suits you and your family. And when when you go to check out, use promo code LOCK15, and then I'll get you 15% off your next order at built.com. There's a new quarterback in the AFC West, and his name is Russell Wilson. And this trade right here for the Denver Broncos has ripple effects all across the entire National Football League and inside the AFC. The AFC West, Sarah, has just gotten much more scarier. Factor in these quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert, and Derek Carr was a pretty darn good quarterback as well. This is must-see TV. Anytime that these teams play each other, it needs to be on national television, which I can't help but just say, hey, look, this move right here for the Broncos, sir, it automatically puts the Broncos on the map here in 2022 for more nationally televised games, more primetime games, because people want to see Russell Wilson. They want to see this young talent that they have. And there's also another guy we'll talk about this week that could return to Denver as well, but Sarah, this is huge for the Broncos inside the AFC. How do you think that they fare right now in the NFL conversation and inside the AFC as a conference in whole? Well, I don't think it's an overreaction, Cody, to say that I think the Broncos are now legitimately Super Bowl contenders. And I mean, that's just the way that I've kind of approached this. If you get a guy like Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson, I, I mean, I can't I can't drop the story that I've been preaching for months now at this point. I mean, even when Vic Fangio was still the head coach, we said or I said this for sure, at least. And I think you and I would have agreed. Yeah. You know, you put a superstar quarterback on this roster and I think you become legitimate contenders uh, in the AFC, which is a very, very tough conference right now. Obviously, even just outside of the AFC West, but you add Russell Wilson to the fray. And yeah, you're talking every single week is a, is a primetime game for this division. I mean, the, at least the NFL is probably going to try to get that. Everyone wants to see Herbert versus Mahomes. Everybody wants to see, you know, Mahomes versus Russell. Everyone wants to see Russ versus anyone, right? And so, and not to mention the Broncos have the NFC West on the docket next year as well. So that's, I mean, Sunday it's night be football. One I bet, I bet that's the Sunday night football game. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, does Denver play them home or away? That's the bigger. It's question. away. It's a. I oh. think it's in Seattle. Oh. Is what I heard. So Sunday night football. There we go. You heard it here. There we me. go. There we go. And, and deservedly so. And it's fun to be able to even start talking about this. Remember last year we had none, and we had to luck into like you know, hey, playing our way into a game. couple of games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Thursday night against the Browns when you know Dearness Johnson is the star of the game. So. Gone are those days, Cody. I mean, God willing, Russ stays healthy and everything's able to go according to plan. 
But as of right now, I don't know how you could look at the Broncos as anything but contenders. Yes, it's a tough division. But at the same time, the Broncos have basically split with the Chargers the last couple of years with Justin Herbert even playing as well as he has. And then obviously Kansas City, the Broncos have been getting really, really close to beating them, even you know with the roster being the way that it is or the quarterback situation. I, ironically enough, it feels like the Raiders have had the easiest time with the Broncos yeah. over the last few seasons. So I feel like everything is different now. Everything is completely changed. A quarterback that can raise the boats in the harbor, the tide that raises all the boats. How many times have I said that? The Broncos so now have one. The Broncos have a, a tide that's going to raise every boat in that harbor. And you see the players reacting on Twitter. Everybody is is geeked up and excited about it. Did you see Jerry Judy's reaction? He posted an emoji after the whole Aaron Rodgers news. Like yeah. it was kind of like this mm, blank face. Mm. And then all of a sudden the, the Russell Wilson news, he goes, Oh, we lit fire emoji. <laughs> like players are stoked. And look, it goes back to those memes. Look, we, we talk about Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick being extended last year by George Payton. And you and I had said it once those extensions happened, there is no way that he went into those contract talks with them and said, Hey, you know what? We're going to give you Teddy Bridgewater as your quarterback here for your contract. We're going to go. He said, we're going to go out there and we're going to get you a quarterback. And I know for thing, and I can never say anything. I can't say who said what or who said who, but there was a talk that George Payton was telling these guys on this roster, we're going to go out and we're going to get a quarterback. And that didn't say who it was going to be, but he told those guys, we're going to go get a quarterback and we're going to have some fun. George Payton is going all in here on this Broncos team. I know we're going to dedicate an entire segment to him coming up here in just a moment, but I also want to ask the question too. We talk about how this raises the, the sales for the Denver Broncos and how e Russell Wilson's impact right away automatically creates this thing for the Denver Broncos where it's must watch TV. These AFC West matchups are must watch these rematches where you're going to have Russ going back home to Seattle is going to be much, wa you know, much watch, not to mention, you have the NFL ownership situation coming there. How is it going to feel like a Peyton Manning's ownership groups or something like that all of a sudden here? I, I think that this automatically changes the landscape of the Denver Broncos from a league perspective, but also from a cultural and, and standpoint perspective because we talk about this ownership group. We had talked about the concerns of a new owner coming in and potentially just cleaning house and saying, hey, we're going to do it this way. Now it's almost preserved. Whoever that owner is going to be coming in, they're going to look to preserve this and much more. And an owner with really deep pockets, and if they really care about the Broncos the way that Pat Bullen did, Russell Wilson could reset the quarterback market here in about a year or two with a contract extension. I don't think Denver's going to let him go. I think they're going to try whatever they can to make Russ be their quarterback until he retires. I'd be on board with that. I think that'd be that'd be great. But in the meantime, Denver still has to compete with Kansas City, the Chiefs, the Buffalo Bills, who have now emerged, and also the Cincinnati Bengals, who just appeared on the Super Bowl last year, not to mention the Baltimore Ravens. The AFC is kind of wide open right now, Sarah. How do you think the Broncos fit in with all those teams? Well, I think they're right up there. You know, we talk about this roster and where it's been at and where it's been growing to, at least. And I think you have to, you do have to look a little bit in the, you hate to say the word potential because potential is not real, it's not substance. But at the same time, you know, we've seen a lot of the players on this Denver Broncos roster really ascending over the last couple seasons. And you could see the potential there to say, hey, if a quarterback comes in, it makes this guy better. It makes this guy so much better. And this guy being better, like, let's just let's just throw out some names. If, if Cortland Sutton is able to be better and be able to be more involved, that makes Jerry Judy's job way easier, which makes Tim Patrick's job way easier, which makes Javante Williams' job way easier. The quarterback changes everything. And we've seen that with all these different teams. The only difference is, these other teams have had to pay their dues in terms of we have to develop these quarterbacks. The Broncos have always gone the, the other way. They've always brought in guys that can be, you know, dating back to obviously uh, Jake Plummer and, and Peyton Manning. And, and obviously there's others been along the way and some have worked out better than others, of course, but man, this puts the Broncos right in that mix. I, I'm not going to sit here and say that they have 12 pro bowlers on the roster, which doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But I do think that a guy like Russell Wilson is going to make a guy like Jerry Judy so much. I don't think it's ridiculous to say that by any means. I think it's, I think absolutely the opposite. I think it'd be ridiculous to think that, that Russell Wilson's not going to make Jerry Judy better or Tim Patrick or Cortland Sutton. So to me, Cody, you're right in the fray of the AFC as good and as talented as it is. Honestly, as we're talking about all these teams, the first ones that come to my mind, Kansas city, you know, Buffalo, even the chargers in division, the Raiders, the Cincinnati Bengals hadn't even crossed my mind, but they represented the AFC in the Super Bowl. So it's such a tough conference. But at the same time, you have to have an MVP caliber guy to rise to the top of that uh, of that conference. And I think the Broncos now have exactly that.
you know, ironically enough, we sat down as well. We recorded an interview with Tim Jenkins because the whole Aaron Rodgers thing, you were like, hey, what do the Broncos do now at quarterback? You know, we're getting Tim's insight on it. We're talking about the NFL draft class. That's a completely irrelevant episode that we now have to throw. So we like have to re-record now with Tim Jenkins here. Uh, but, you know, one thing that Tim did say when he sat down in our interview with us, he said, the Denver Broncos are a playoff caliber quarterback or just a really good quarterback for being a competing playoff team inside the NFL. And, and now, I mean, you get a Super Bowl winning quarterback. In Russell Wilson, you get a guy that is absolutely talented and has done a lot with less around him for several years since they had that Super Bowl 48 victory against the Broncos. And you just have to think to yourself, OK, hey, with this roster on paper, Denver becomes probably one of the most dangerous teams in the National Football League. And I want to give a major shout out here real quick to one of our Twitter followers at Wes Irvin says it's safe to say that the Broncos are going to be dangerous next season what a perfect segue what a perfect catchphrase for you Wes shout out to you you get all the credit for that my man but Broncos country we need to talk about George Payton and what he's done so far through two years of being on the job as general manager you get that coming up here in just a moment but real quick if you were a Colorado sports fan we have a locked on podcast for you when it comes to Nuggets coverage with Nikola Jokic playing MVP like basketball check out the locked on Nuggets podcast when it comes to the Colorado Rockies who are currently dealing with the MLB lockout that's going on as is they have you covered with the latest you need to know on the latest updates between the negotiations and where things currently stand with the upcoming MLB season. And then we also have the Locked On Avalanche podcast as the Avs look to hoist up a Stanley Cup trophy. You get that and much more alongside your Denver Broncos coverage, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's fourth quarter time on today's episode. Lockdown Broncos breaking news with Russell Wilson now being the quarterback here for the Denver Broncos organization. And if you love this show so far, we encourage you to subscribe here on YouTube if you want to watch us and make sure you subscribe and follow along free and available everywhere you get your podcast. Broncos country, thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. We're here for you five days a week, all year long, because for the true fan, there is never an offseason. And Sarah, our offseason is going to be wild. It's going to continue. So many questions now with this blockbuster trade with Russell Wilson now becoming a Denver Bronco. We'd be remiss if we don't talk about George Payton here. And I love what you put in the show notes here. George Brass Nuts Payton as the title. No more needs to be said here. Let's talk about that. I mean, Sarah, I, I think his impact, the relationships he's built in the building, the coaches that he's brought around – and the players that he's brought in and developed, obviously the Broncos winning the award at the NFL Scouting Combine for the best draft class from 2021 in the eyes of many voters. Unbelievable job that he's done. And now he's got Russell Wilson. He's traded for Russell Wilson in year two as the GM. He has done such a great job right now coming through. Yeah, could you ask for a better start to your career as an NFL general manager? I mean, the best draft from your first year on the job. And then in your second year on the job, you go and trade for an MVP caliber quarterback and really do something that I don't know. Again, I don't know that any general manager has done that before. A lot of people talk about the Ricky Williams trade, the Herschel Walker trade, et cetera, et cetera. But for a, a guy like Russell Wilson at the age of 33, I mean, this is, this is beyond exciting. And so for what George Payton has done, I mean, it, kudos again, go back to John Elway for hiring George Payton. I mean, he could have hired any number of guys and he chose George Payton out of them all. And, and Payton obviously has his philosophies and, the way that he does things, but there's a reason why he turned down so many jobs until he finally eventually took this Denver job. And so just kudos to him for, for having the, you know, guts to go out and do something like this, to ask the Seahawks, say, what is it going to take for <laughs> Russell? Well, I mean, and then to ask for a fourth round pick to come back. I mean, I this love guy, it. he know he has no boundaries when it comes to like, Hey, what, I mean, what can we do here? So I absolutely love it. The draft class was outstanding. And by the way, didn't lose anybody from that draft class in this trade. And yeah, wow. losing draft picks going forward is, is it, it hurts for people like me who like to do mock drafts. But at the same time, to me, Cody, these draft picks are borderline negligible. Like I made a joke on my Twitter. I wonder if he asked John Schneider, the GM of the Seahawks, like, do you want pick number 64 this year or do you want it next year? Like, because we're winning the dang <laughs> Super Bowl. So, I, I mean, that's just kind of what these draft picks mean at this point. It's like, yeah, it's nice to have draft picks when your team stinks. When you have a Super Bowl caliber quarterback, they don't matter. Well, now it changes everything for the Denver Broncos because with a quarterback like Russell Wilson, a young, talented roster, and the cap space that the Broncos have, all of a sudden, just like what we saw with Peyton Manning, it becomes a free agency destination where guys might be willing to come and play for lesser money for a chance to win a Super Bowl. And that's exactly what Russell Wilson does for the Broncos. That's the type of environment that George Payton has now created for this organization. And we talk about 
you know, guys that it now sets it up. Who could come to the Denver Broncos now? You look at guys that are maybe ring chasers, guys who have never won a Super Bowl ring in their career, or maybe they've won one, right, and they want another taste at it, and they want to go to a contender. We've seen that. But Denver has the opportunity to get some of the best players out there potentially in free agency, and they still have a little bit of back-end draft capital. If they wanted to move back up into maybe round one, round two, I don't know. Like I said, the two first-round picks that Denver gave up, is it both second-round picks this year? Is it one of the second-round picks this year and one of the second-round picks next year? That, to me, is unknown at this point. But if Denver has one of those second picks in this year's draft remaining, plus a little bit of their back-end capital, Sarah, why not use that to maybe if you really want a guy, you really like a guy, trade up and get a guy, one of the top playmakers? I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of options George Payton has, but, man, I tell you what, it's going to be an absolute gauntlet here for the Broncos. And there's a, another guy that we'll focus on in tomorrow's episode of the show, Lockdown Broncos, former Denver Bronco, by the way, Von Miller. Does this increase the chance that he wants to come back? I think so. Maybe he knew something, you know, a couple of days ago that we didn't know. But obviously the tease is there. Russell Wilson, a Denver Bronco. And Broncos country, this is major for the organization. This is major for you, the fan base. You deserve it after all the years of dealing with the non-quarterbacks that were supposed to be the answer after Peyton Manning. Now the Broncos have their guy in Russell Wilson. Let us know how you feel in the comment section down below. If you love this video, if you're a first-time watcher here on YouTube and you love this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications because we have you covered every single day with all the Denver Broncos news, content, and coverage you need. We love interacting with you in the YouTube comment section down below. So it in the world to Sarah and I if you'd like the video and also comment for the algorithm, not to mention follow along in your favorite audio podcasting platforms. We have you covered every single day. Tomorrow's episode of Lockdown Broncos. How does this move continue to impact the Broncos with the ripple effects here? We'll address some of those other ripple effects like defensive end, tight end, Von Miller, and more on tomorrow's episode, Locked on Broncos.